Hey there, it's Steve from Sirius Keto, and in this video, we're gonna bust out a little trick from the world of molecular gastronomy to create the most ooey gooey cheese slices you've ever had. Now, this particular trick is not keto specific. So if you're not keto, welcome to the channel. Stick around, maybe you'll find some other stuff that you like. But if you are one of my subscribers, we're gonna be using this particular trick quite a bit going forward. If you've ever done any cooking with cheese, you understand that as the cheese is exposed to heat, the oils and fats start to separate. An example of this would be when you're making a cheeseburger with a cheese that's other than something like American cheese, so a non-processed cheese like the one on the left, where we have a slice of deli cheddar. And you can see that the oil is starting to separate a little bit from that cheese there. On the right, that looks like a burger topped with a big, thick slab of Velveeta. Look at how that melts. It's not Velveeta. That's extra sharp cheddar, to which we've applied this particular method. So I found out about this method and the ingredient that we're gonna use, sodium citrate, about seven or eight years ago in this book, Modernist Cuisine at Home. Now, if you love cooking and love the science behind it and love gorgeous, gorgeous food photography, this book is fantastic. It is not cheap though. This particular book is about $100. It would be an awesome Christmas gift, just saying. I'll include the link to it down below just in case you're interested in finding out more. Now the applications of this extend far beyond cheese slices as you're gonna find out in some of my future videos. You can make cheese sauces, you can make cheese soup, you can make cheese nuggets that you can bake inside biscuits for an ooey gooey center. You can make cheese sticks that you can put inside the corn dog maker, again, for that ooey gooey cheese factor. But we're gonna start with just some straight up sharp cheddar cheese slices. And to begin with, we're gonna preheat our oven to 225 degrees. Then we'll take a cookie sheet lined with a silicone mat or you can also use parchment paper, but if you do use parchment paper, you should lightly oil it. We're gonna take that and we're gonna put it in the oven. Then we're gonna make our cheese. We'll start with one half cup of water plus one tablespoon of water. To this, we'll add one tablespoon of sodium citrate, and I will include a link for that below in the description. Set the burner to low and stir until the sodium citrate has dissolved. Once dissolved, bring the heat up to medium and we want to get to just barely a simmer before we start adding our cheese. We're going to be using five cups of shredded sharp cheddar. If you have a food processor, I recommend using that versus buying it already shredded. It's a lot more cost effective. We'll add our cheese one handful at a time stirring each until it's melted. It's all right if you still see a couple little chunks of unmelted cheese. We'll get it all melted eventually. With all of our cheese added, now we just want to make sure that we continue to stir until it's completely smooth and we don't see any little chunks of cheese at all. Look at how smooth that is. And now we'll transfer it to our cookie sheet. You're going to want to pour this fairly quickly as it starts to set up almost immediately. To the extent that you can kind of get this in a rectangular shape, you want to do that. Now we'll let this sit and cool for about 10 minutes, then we're going to cover it with plastic wrap. Now that the cookie sheet is cool to the touch, we'll cover this with some plastic wrap. Then you can either let this continue to cool for a little while, 
at least down to room temperature before you put it in the fridge. Or if you live in Wisconsin and it's November, your garage is one great big fridge already. So that's where this is gonna go for the next two hours. Because I screwed up earlier in the day and recorded this entire video without my microphone on, I already have some cheese that is chilled and is ready to be sliced. We'll remove our plastic wrap. And then to make the cheese slices, you want something that's got an edge on it, but that isn't sharp. So I'm just using this offset spatula. And first I'm just gonna trim up a couple of the less rectangular parts. You can be as much of a perfectionist as you want in this. Just be aware, these things are gonna melt like crazy. No one's gonna really know if it was a square shape or not. Glide this across. I'm gonna use these extra bits here for a different cooking application. You can always just take them and lay them down in slices in a grilled cheese, whatever you want. But I want a few perfect slices here. Next, you're gonna to wanna to layer these between wax paper. I'm gonna include a link, just because I think these things are great, to these wax paper squares. And then we'll slide these into a Ziploc bag. So now that we've made our sharp cheddar slices, we're gonna do something a little bit different here. We're gonna use some Emmentaler, which is kind of like a Swiss, but a little drier and nuttier. And we're gonna use that to make some cheese sticks that just happen to fit in that corn dog maker. To do this, we're gonna use a cylindrical ice cube mold, the type that you use to create the ice cubes that go in your water bottle. And instead of using five cups of cheese, we're just gonna use three cups of Emmentaler. Again, we're gonna use one half cup of water because Emmentaler is a drier cheese. Two teaspoons of sodium citrate. Set our burner to low and dissolve that sodium citrate. We'll bring the heat up to medium and wait for this to start to simmer. Then like before, we'll add our cheese, one handful at a time, stirring until it melts. And now that it is completely smooth, we are gonna transfer this to our ice cube mold. For this, we're gonna wanna start at one end and pour towards the other end, making sure that we fill up all of these cavities. That should be good. We're gonna have a little left over. Then we pop the lid on. Pressing it down until you start to see the cheese in the holes there. Perfect. We'll let this cool for at least 10 minutes, then we will put it in the fridge for two hours. I reheated the leftovers, and I'm gonna put these into some of these little peanut butter cup candy molds. Off to the fridge. Let's see how our cheese sticks look. We'll put these on some plastic wrap. And then we'll throw these into the fridge for a recipe that's coming soon. It might be those cheese sticks I showed in the intro, or it could be something really special. 
So that's just a sneak peek of what we can do with sodium citrate. Like I said before, I will include all of the links to the tools and ingredients that I used down below. And in the coming weeks, we're going to use this method to do a number of really fun keto recipes. So if you enjoyed this video, click that like button, click that subscribe button, click the bell next to it so you're notified whenever I release a new video. And thanks for watching.